Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors. Do you know that today is International Mend Day? That's right. Not men, mend, as in fix. Um, and we're working on this Nico TRM50. This is the back end of it. A couple of things I'm going to do to it. One of them, this sad power cord that these have. They have an interlock right there and it goes through a flange that's rooted to the back of the lid. And this is the same kind of interlock. If you've ever been into um, 1960s tube radios, 70s TV sets, the tube ones, it was anything that had a series string of heaters usually had this type of cord. Um, that Electrome TV that I did a few months ago had one. And it actually was causing a problem. We'd be watching and it would flicker. It was this right there where it was meeting those pins. Sometimes you'd flow a little solder on the pins and get it to grab. These just, I don't know, never worked well. I'm surprised they're on a stereo component, but early Nikos did this, not all of them. But what I'd like to do is upgrade it. So we might as well talk a little bit about power cords. So my thought, and I usually don't do this, but I could put a new socket in, one that's a little tighter. Or we could actually put, just file that out just a little bit bigger. There's not a lot of room, but enough to put in a three conductor cord on a socket. Now wouldn't that be cool? Like a computer type of cord, which are very plentiful. These are just two bucks down at one of the surplus stores. Anyway. I'm going to do that and the main reason you, well, I don't ground every one through the power cord. There's actually in this design, there's a 0.0047 capacitor, 600 volt, that goes between each power lead and chassis. It's right on the schematic. It gives it an artificial ground, but one thing I noticed with this one is there's a metal edge on my table here. And it's not grounded. We're on a carpet with an underpad on a wooden floor. But I was feeling a little bit of a tingle here. When I was, when I was, you know, testing the thing. I'm like, where is that coming from? So I actually put my handy dandy multimeter just on the edge of the chassis and onto ground on my power bar. And I was getting about 70 volts AC. So one of these caps right here they're old Matsushita oil caps and they lasted they're a good cap ceramic case one of them has a high resistance short so you can eliminate that most designs don't have those capacitors but it depends where they were sold European ones US market don't but Canadian market had them added and I noticed that Ken was Yamaha's pioneers. They would have a resistor and a cap as a little gimmick in parallel between one side of the AC line cord and the chassis. And I usually eliminate them because where I listen to my stereos, my main stereo, I always have a ground. I actually have a ground wire. So the phono ground goes on the ground lug and so does the ground wire. And uh, you can ground it to a water pipe or something if you can get access to the basement below. Actually, the power bar that I use is a metal cased power bar and it actually has a ground post on it. So it has a three prong cord, a ground post, and I bring it to there. So if it has an, an intact, nice looking original core that says Trio or Sony on it, I usually leave them in, especially if it goes through a grommet. But many times I find I look at these cords and you kind of run them through your fingers and it's like, oops, oh, kitty cat had lunch there. This one was pinched in the baseboard here. It's amazing how many, I actually have a, a Trio TW61 sitting in the garage that I just unpacked. And it has the original cord and it says Trio on the cord. There's three hacks in the cord. One of them you can see copper. You know, it's 50 some years old, right? It's been around. I have a few scars on me. 
The second thing I'm going to do on this, once I finish doing this, the two Nico 18005 Phono um, modules are in a great circuit. There's one for each channel. I'm actually going to build a replacement on this little project board. You can get these at one of the local surplus places. It's like, I forget what it was, 249 very inexpensive. What I'm going to do is just do, well basically I have all the parts here. I don't know if you can get to see this in the camera. but All the resistors, the four transistors, and actually in the factory service manual, they give you a schematic what's in the HB18005 module, which the left channel sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work. I tried sweating the leads with a soldering iron, I got it working for a while again, but something inside of it's been damaged. I don't think I can get all these inside there. In one of them, they're sealed with some kind of epoxy. So I'm gonna do it both channels on this board. I can show it to you later. And then just fasten it down right on top of where they used to be in that section. So that's the plans here. Thanks for watching and listening.